Hey everyone, I want to welcome you to the Delaware Student Success presentation about Goldie Beacom College tonight. Um, my name is Karen Keegan. I'm with the Delaware Department of Education. On the call with me tonight are my colleagues from the University of Delaware's Institute for Public Administration helping to run this Delaware Student Success Program. Um, Kelly Sheritz and Chris Kelly are on the call with me. Um, I want to just give you a few housekeeping um, pieces of information. Everyone is muted. Um, there will be no videos uh, for attendees on tonight. And if you have any questions, please put them in the chat and the team from Goldie Beacom will respond to your questions um, throughout the presentation and at the end. I wanna bring to your attention the, um, these webinars that we have going on uh, two to three times a week from seven to 8 p.m. So we've held some of them already, but they're on all different post-secondary opportunities. So if you're thinking about planning for what you're gonna do after you graduate from high school, please um, consider registering and attending these webinars, the ones that are of interest to you. We've had um, a couple already on identifying your interests and picking a career. I should also say this webinar is being recorded um, and will be available after for viewing. Um, all of the webinars are recorded and will be accessible on DelawareStudentSuccess.org. Um, all of our Delaware colleges and universities are doing their own presentations with us. So tonight is Goldie Beacom. We've already heard from Delaware Tech, University of Delaware and Delaware State University. So those recordings are all posted on our website. Um, coming up will be um, Wesley College, Delaware College of Art and Design. We also have some presentations from the military, if that's something that you're considering. We will have most of the branches presenting um, their career and educational opportunities. We'll do a session on resumes and interviews and cover letters. Also, if you're thinking about apprenticeships or getting an industry certification and want to know what kind of jobs you can get, um, those topics are coming up as well. So please um, feel free to share this information with your friends and your parents um, and join us as you can or watch the recordings afterwards. Another program that we recently launched is our Delaware Student Success Texting Program. So this is um, allows you to sign up. If you want to join, you can text the word success to 302-492-2092. And we will text you about two to three times a week with next steps of things that you might want to think about doing as you prepare for um, what you're going to do after high school graduation. We'll send you some reminders about these upcoming webinars. And if you have questions along the way about your plans, your you know, college applications, the FAFSA, whatever you're doing, you can text us and we will respond to your questions. And the team who will be responding are the people on this call tonight, um, um, the team from the Institute for Public Administration and myself. So those are the people who will be answering any questions that you have. Also on the website, I wanna point out that um, one of our partners is called uh, Stand By Me and they are offering um, many financial aid and scholarship sessions, which you will find on our calendar at DelawareStudentSuccess.org. So if you wanna learn about how to pay for college, how to apply for scholarships, um, they have many different sessions during the week that you are welcome to attend. Of course, they're free and you can register for those as well. They are also offering one on one FAFSA appointments to help you complete your FAFSA if you would like individual help with that. So please take advantage of that. So at this point, I will turn it over to um, the team at Goldie Beacom and they will share their information on their college. And I thank them all for being with us tonight. All right, good evening. Just wanna make sure everybody can see my screen. <laughs> Um, so good evening. My name is Brittany Hobbs. I am the assistant director from Goldie of uh, um, undergraduate admissions from Goldie Beacom College. Um, I am joined here tonight with a few of my colleagues and we're going to go over some more information about Goldie Beacom. Um, I'm going to talk about the admissions portion, then I'm going to go to coach Andy Shear, who is our head coach of um, cross country and men's and women's cross country and men's and women's track and field. Then I will go to Tatiana who will talk about student life and our residence halls. And then 
um, Beth Kirker, who is our coordinator of career services, will discuss our amazing career services department. And Eric Johnson will talk about who is from our financial aid um, and advising department. So he's going to talk to you a little bit about the financial aid process. And then lastly, we will have um, one of our current students, Laura, um, you know, just talk about Goldie Beacom from her perspective. Um, so, um, So Goldie Beacom is located in Wilmington, Delaware. We are a small school. We've been around since 1886. Um, we are located in the Pike Creek area. We have been doing some construction lately. So you, if you are familiar with the area, you may have seen that. And we're really excited about our new additions to the campus. We've just added um, a brand new residence hall. We um, completely redid one of our current buildings, the dining hall and um, everything. And Tatiana will talk more about that. But if you drive by us in the Pike Creek area, um, you would have noticed that construction. Um, we are located in you know, a pretty central area to some other big cities. Um, so meet the admissions rep. So we, um, the, this is the admissions rep. So when you um, inquire or apply or want more information about Goldie Beacon College, one of us will contact you. Um, we all share um, schools in Delaware. So we all work with students from Delaware. We all have different high schools in Newcastle County. I work with all students from Sussex County. And then Joey works with all students from Kent County. Um, but any of us would be glad to help you. You can email us, call us. We can set up um, in-person visits. So we are doing um, in-person visits. We have you know, COVID policies that we are following, um, but we are still um, inviting students to campus if you feel comfortable with that. If you don't, we are also available to meet via Zoom. So please feel free to reach out to us um, to get more information. So this slide has um, a couple of fun facts about the college. Um, as I mentioned before, we are a small school. So all of your class sizes um, will be you know, pretty small. Our student faculty ratio is 20 to one. The most students that will be in any of your classes would be you know, 40 or 45 students. So you're never gonna be in a huge you know, lecture hall with two, 300 students. Um, the professors will know you, um, so they'll know if you're attending classes and if you're not attending classes, they're going to, you know, contact your advisor and your advisor is going to follow up with you. You know, we want to make sure our students are doing well. We want to check in on you and see, you know, if there's something we can help you with or, um, you know, what, what's the reason that you're not attending classes. Um, we have currently we have 25 undergrad degree options um, and I will get into those in the next slide a little bit more. Um, but outside of our undergrad degrees, we also offer associates degrees. We offer certificate programs. Um, we offer graduate degrees as well as um, a doctorate program. Um, we also offer um, dual enrollment courses. So if um, you are in high school and you're interested in taking a class at Goldie Beacom, you do have the option of doing that. If you're a junior or senior, um, you can take up to four classes at Goldie Beacom and each, each class would only cost you $100. So you get the option of taking a college credit, um, college level course, you would receive the three credits for that course. So you can kind of try out our classes and see um, you know, how you like them while you're still in high school. The, um, another, the next one is 54% um, of our freshmen live on campus. So a little bit over half. Um, all students can live on campus every year if they'd like, but you're not required to live on campus um, any year. So it's, it's up to the student. Um, a fun fact, all students are able to bring their um, car on campus for free. So freshman, sophomore, junior, whatever, we have, you know, plenty of parking available. Um, no one needs a car on campus. Everything is within walking distance, as well as being in walking distance to um, a shopping center right across the street. Um, but if you would like to have a car on campus, you are able to do that. 
um, we always have three day weekends. So, well, we don't in, in that work at the college, we're still here on Fridays, but students um, do not ever have classes on Friday. So um, your classes would either be, you know, Monday, to, or I'm sorry, Monday, Wednesday, Tuesday, Thursday, or if it's a, an evening course, it would just be, meet once a week at um, whichever day it's scheduled, but um, Friday, Saturdays, and Sundays, you, you wouldn't have classes. So this gives you extra time to either if you want to get a job, part-time job, or extra study time. Um, also with athletics, it, it helps, you know, if you're um, competing during the weekend. Um, and then speaking of athletics, we also have 13 NCAA Division II um, athletic teams. And um, like I mentioned, Coach Shear is on tonight and he will be discussing that in more detail. Um, so this is a list of all of our current bachelor degree options. Like I mentioned, um, we used to be an all business college, so we do have a strong background in business. So you will see on there um, a bunch of different things under our business administration degree. So with, um, you can apply for just the general business administration program, or you can choose one of our concentrations, um, you know, marketing, management, legal studies, sports management. Um, there's a bunch of different options for you. We also have um, finance, accounting, um, economics, criminal justice, psychology. Um, this fall, we started our um, human services and our communication and media degree. So we're really excited about those. The communication and media degree, we've actually partnered with um, DCAD, Delaware College of Art and Design, and students take four classes um, for this degree with DCAD. So you would actually take your classes, take these four classes um, with professors from DCAD. You don't have to, you know, enroll at DCAD or anything. It's already all set up for you when you enroll in this degree at Goldie Beacom. This year, um, it is brand new this year, this partnership, we were planning to have students, you know, driven to DCAD to take the classes on campus. Unfortunately, right now everything's virtually, but hopefully in the future, these students will actually get to take the classes, you know, in the in the art studios at DCAD. Um, we also have a partnership with Delaware Law School. So for students that are interested in pursuing a law degree, um, this is a great program. It's our three plus three, where you would take your first three years at Goldie Beacom and then um, apply to the law school you're in your third year you're going to start applying to the law school take your LSATs and then your fourth year you will actually start your law classes um, at Delaware Law School. Um, so also with our um, programs one of the great things about all of our degrees a lot of students sometimes when they come into college they're undecided or they may choose a major, but after their first year, they decide they want to change their major. So um, pretty much everybody your first year, you're taking the same core classes. So everybody's gonna start out in you know critical writing one and two and a math course and things like that. Um, so if you come in undecided and then you choose your major after your first year, you're not gonna be behind by taking a bunch of classes that you, know, you didn't need, or if you change your major, you won't be behind because uh, you know all those core classes are required for all of our degrees. If you were to take a class that you didn't need for that degree, all of our majors also require electives. So you can always slot that class in for one of the elective spots. Oh, also about the courses, all of our um, undergrad degrees require 120 credits to graduate and all of our classes are three credits. So it's really laid out nicely for students if they take five classes in the fall, five classes in the spring to be on track to graduate in um, the four years. We do have a summer semester that if students you know, wish to take classes, then they can, um, you know, if they want to accelerate or if they are trying to take a class that they missed during the year, they can do that as well. Um, we have two different um, type of class formats. We have our seven week courses and then we have our 14 week courses. So some, um, so you can kind of schedule classes the, the way that works with you. When you do schedule your classes, you'll schedule them with an admissions rep your first semester and they'll sit down with you and decide what times are better for you. And then after that, you can do it um, online through course registration, but your advisor is always available 
to meet with you to schedule those classes if you would like help with that as well. Um, so you may have seen this advertisement um, around. So we um, are really excited about this. We have um, cut tuition in half. So um, beginning this coming fall, um, tuition for per credit hour um, will start out for for 30 credits for the year will be 12,750. Um, if you were to take more or less credits, this um, this would alter your tuition amount. Um, last year, tuition for 30 credits was this was 25,500. So for the past seven years, we've been awarding um, an affordability assurance award, which has been a per credit hour. This has been awarded to all accepted students. So we were kind of already doing this, um, this, but this year we the college has decided to make it a permanent thing and make it very transparent. So everybody knows this is the price that you're starting out at for for the 30 credits, and then you know there's options of scholarships and financial aid and and um, other things after that, but this is you know something we're, we're really excited about. You'll probably see ads like this around, we hope. So speaking of scholarships, when a student applies, um, we request their high school transcripts and their SAT or ACT scores. And this is the um, awarding grid that we actually use. So we will have the, we, We'll get the completed application, we'll get the transcripts, and then the SAT or ACT scores, and then this is how we will award a merit scholarship. They are from 3,000 to 6,000, so you just find your GPA on the one side, and then at the top, your SAT or ACT scores, and match that up, and that's what you would be eligible for in a merit scholarship. Um, we take super scores, so if you take the SAT more than once, we would take the highest of your scores. Um, if you apply, you get accepted and you get the $3,000 merit scholarship, but then you decide, I wanna take the SAT again. Um, you take the SAT again and you are eligible for a higher scholarship. As long as you submit those scores to us, we would let you know that we could increase your merit scholarship. Um, also, if by the end of the year, when we get your final high school transcript, if your GPA has increased, that makes you eligible for a higher scholarship. Again, we would increase that scholarship for you and let you know. Um, in addition, you know, to, to the merit scholarships, we also have endowed scholarships um, that we start awarding usually in February. Um, and then, you know, financial aid, which Eric will talk about. Um, and then we are division two, so we can offer athletic scholarships, but the coach will talk about that as well. So how to apply? All of this sounds so great, you want to apply, right? Um, we always offer a free application and we have rolling admissions. So that means that um, you can apply at any time. You go to our website, you fill out the application. It's very easy to do. There's no essay required. There's no letters of recommendation required. You fill that out and um, have your counselor send us your transcripts and then your SAT or ACT scores. And like I said, once we receive those, we will review you um, based on that grid and let you know you know, within a week about acceptance and scholarships. So you also don't really have to wait until a certain date to get your um, acceptance. So um, it's very easy to apply. If um, you if you already have letters of recommendation or college essays that you would like to share with us, we would definitely take them. Um, I mentioned those endowed scholarships. Those are all different criteria. So some ask about community service and things like that. So if you have letters and things like um, already written that you want to send in, we will definitely read them, but we don't require them for any of our applications. Um, I just lost my train of thought, but so apply now. It's free. It's easy. Oh, the Common App. We're not on the Common App, but um, because we, our application is a, is a lot easier than the Common App. It doesn't, doesn't have all the different um, questions, so um, it, it's just easier to do you know, the application on our website. 
and then at the bottom it does give our FAFSA school code so Eric will definitely get into this so I, I won't go into it but you can add up to 10 different um, schools on your FAFSA so if you want to add our school code this is our school code here and like Karen mentioned at the end of this presentation the the slides will be posted on the website so now I'm going to turn it over to Coach Shear. Thank you, Brittany. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in with uh, to, to us, the Goldie Beacom College. Uh, I am Coach Andy Shear. I'm head track and cross country coach. Have been with Goldie Beacom for just about five years now, uh, and enjoy very much working at a small college. Um, we are Division Two. I'm going to talk a little bit about the the college experience as an of an athlete first, uh, the overview before I talk about the specifics of being a Goldie Beacom College. Goldie Beacom is a Division II school, which means we do offer athletic scholarship opportunities uh, for athletes and student athletes. So that's something that individual coaches uh, who may approach athletes will be talking to you about. Um, as and I'm sure if you're an athlete and you're being looked at by other colleges, these are conversations you may have with other coaches. Um, we offer a, a number of uh, Division II athletic programs. We have seven women's programs and, and six men's programs which I'll talk about in a little bit, but in order to be a college athlete, uh, there are some requirements that you'll need to meet. The NCAA has certain uh, stipulations. Uh, if you are familiar with the NCAA Eligibility Center, uh, as a Division I or Division II athlete, you will be required to enroll with the NCAA. And that does one of two things. One, it provides you with academic uh, uh, clearance. There are requirements. Those requirements are to have a 2.2 core GPA, and by core, we talk about science, math, English, and social studies. Um, they love it if you have an A in art, but it really doesn't count. Um, you also need to have a 920 SAT score. If, uh, if those two criteria are met from an academic standpoint, you would be eligible to compete as a freshman athlete um, at a Division I or Division II school. However, uh, if you don't quite meet those requirements, you still have the opportunity to be part of an athletic team at a college level. Uh, you simply have to do what's called a year of residency, which is to complete 24 credits, pass those credits with a 2.0 at, at the college of your choice, hopefully Goldie Beacom, uh, and then you would be eligible to be an athlete uh, and compete at your second full year as a student athlete. Um, so the other side of the NCAA Eligibility Center is to provide amateur status. Um, as you're probably aware, amateur athletes are not allowed to be paid. Uh, we're not allowed to have agents. Um, and so those are things that the NCAA takes very seriously. So before you do anything uh, to be a college student athlete, you need to enroll in the NCAA. And it's simple, simple to find, NCAA.org. And there is a link on the main page, which will tell you all about being a student athlete. Now, what's it like to be a student athlete? Well, uh, as, you can, as you hear me say, I talk about student athlete. Um, and Goldie Beacom is very specific, and most Division II schools are, are very high on making sure that students and academics come first. Um, you are an athlete, and there will be requirements, and there will be certain uh, um, expectations that we have, but some of those expectations have to do an awful lot with the classroom and how well you do as a class, uh, classroom student. Um, some stats I want to pass along to you about student athletes at Goldie Beacom College. Uh, this past semester, our spring GPA for all student athletes was 3.24. Our cumulative GPA overall is a 3.18. So if you're on one of those 13 NCAA Division II sports at Golden Beacon College, their cumulative student uh, grade point average is a 3.18. Uh, we have a four-year uh, four graduation rate of 60%, which is uh, 10 points higher than the national average. Um, and our academic success rate and retention rate is 86% which is significantly higher than the national average of 73%. So you can see Goldie Beacom takes these athletics seriously, but it takes its academics even more seriously. So part of those expectations are that you are a good student uh, as well as an athlete. Now, what's it like to be a, a student athlete and what's it like uh, the day of a life of a student athlete? Well, if you are on one of our 13 teams and you can see uh, on the, the far left-hand side of the slide there, uh, men's and women's basketball, men's and women's cross country, men's and women's soccer, men's and women's track and field. There's also women's volleyball, women's tennis, women's softball, men's golf, and men's baseball. Um, we don't have a football team, uh, and if we did, I'd be the offensive line coach. Uh, <laughs> but uh, th those, those programs, those student athletes, 
Um, we'll have a variety of practice times and schedules. We have a, a, an on-site, on-staff, um, full-time certified strength and conditioning coach who works with all 13 teams. Um, the average workout week is about 20 hours. Um, and I'll use cross country as an example. We meet for practice at 6.30 in the morning. Uh, we'll run and practice for about two hours. And then several days a week, at least two, maybe three, we'll also have an afternoon weightlifting or conditioning session. That is typical of a college student athlete, uh, anywhere from 16 to 20 hours, not including competition time. Competitions for us um, could be as far away as North Carolina uh, or as close as uh, Carousel Park, which sits a half mile away from the campus itself. So we've got the opportunity to compete at a very high level at Goldie Beacom. Uh, we're part of the Central Atlantic Co uh, Collegiate Conference, the CACC. The 14 teams in that conference go from as far south as us to as far north as Post up in Connecticut. So we cover five different states in our conference. But having said that, it's one of the smallest footprints in Division II in that we can get from, uh, from one of our teams in the conference to the other team uh, in about four to four and a half hours. So you're not spending long weekends driving for basketball competitions uh, or soccer competitions. If you're in conference play, um, typically we might have one or two competitions out of the region, but for the most part, you're within a three or four hour drive uh, for those, those uh, regular competitions. Practices, 20 hours a week, as I mentioned, competitions, sometimes two or three, depending on uh, how heavy the season is. I know baseball and softball, sometimes we'll have three or four contests, depending on, on the seasonality and whether or not there are rainouts and whatnot. Uh, but again, I, I will get back to the original point. You are, so you are a student first uh, and then an athlete secondary. Now, some of the things about being a, a collegiate student athlete that, uh, that you can benefit from at Goldie Beacom College um, a lot of the, uh, the intangibles that I like to call them. First of all, we have approximately 205 student athletes on campus. Um, and approximately 33% of those student athletes are international students. Uh, we don't have a study abroad program at Goldie Beacom. However, we bring the abroad to you. Um, on my team alone, I've just I actually just uh, uh, signed a German student athlete. He'll be running track and field for us. Um, we have members of the soccer team who span most of the countries in Europe. Um, South Africa, our women's tennis team uh, is, you know, a lot of uh, South American um, student athletes. Um, you're going to find students from Australia. You're going to find students from Colombia. So it's an opportunity for you to, to, to have that student athlete, that, that international flavor brought to you. Uh, and if, you know, you do the math, 205 student athletes, at least 70 of them have some kind of international background or are from a foreign country, um, which really gives you a great opportunity to experience that culture. Other things, uh, uh, career services that Beth Kirker will be talking about uh, a little bit later on. Um, we have the opportunity to have leadership academy opportunities for student athletes to kind of grow and learn. One of the things that, that we take seriously is the fact that you are spending 20 hours a week as a student athlete. Uh, you are practicing, you are competing. And so we, we kind of, um, we've taken that 20 hours out of your week. So we try and give it back to you in other ways that are meaningful. Um, for example, this coming week, uh, we have a special student athlete orientation program with a USA Olympic weightlifter, uh, and she will be uh, presenting to our student athletes probably about 45 to 50 minutes talking about what it's like to be a member of the United States Olympic team. So these are opportunities and some of the intangibles that you would get as being a student athlete at Goldie Beacon College. Uh, as you can see from this slide, um, our, our, our teams, just don't pay attention to the guy in the lower right. <laughs> um, our, our teams are, are champions. Our teams are very successful. Um, we have had uh, our women's tennis team is regionally ranked every year. Um, our men's soccer team went to the round of 32 not too long ago. Our women's uh, um, basketball team and men's basketball team both have made the conference championships um, several times in the last few years. Our men's baseball team and men's golf team have also been regionally ranked in the last couple of years. So for a small school, as Brittany mentioned, um, and 205 student athletes, we have a high level of success as athletes uh, at the Division II level. So um, it's a well-rounded experience. It's an opportunity to kind of grow and learn. Um, as I like to say, most, most student athletes at Division II aren't going to be recruited by Nike or Adidas to be um, spokespeople. But what you're looking for and what we think, what I think we give at, at Goldie Beacon College is the experience of being a student athlete 
and having something that you can take with you for the rest of your life. So, um, you know, as you consider those college options and opportunities, uh, I, I, I thank you very much for, for making Goldie Beacon one of those con uh, considerations. Hi, I'm Tatiana. I'm the coordinator of student engagement at Goldie Beacom College. My ro central role in the student affairs office is basically to create engaging experiences outside of the classroom for our students. Um, so right now I'm gonna dive into talking about our dining options and our residence halls, as well as some of the extracurriculars that um, student engagement and residence life have to offer. Um, so this is our newly expanded, our new dining hall. Um, that's a lot of new options. We have all you care to eat meal plans, made to order cafe options. There's gonna be a cool brick oven pizza there, barista made coffee and a grab and go section, which is really neat. So when you're on the go, um, heading off to class, you can just go in, swipe your lightning ID card and be off to class. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about all of our residence halls. Um, as you can see in the picture, we have five residence halls, which consist of Leach Hall, Jackson Hall, Miller Hall, Abel Hall, and our newly built Franta Hall. Um, Leach, Jackson, Miller, and Abel Hall are more of our um, apartment style of living. So it comes with two bedrooms, um, two bathrooms, a common living room area, as well as um, a kitchenette, which as you can see in this picture of Leach Hall, this is the essential layout of what our apartment style um, living looks like. So we usually have four students to each bedroom. I mean, not four students. We have two students to each bedroom, but four students in the apartment itself. Um, And then Franta Hall is our new residence hall, which is more traditional style. So this doesn't have a um, kitchen and it's not apartment styled. It, is, can, it consists of double and single bedrooms with study lounges and common areas on each floor, um, as well as single user bathrooms. It also has, um, nice area spaces such as our meeting spaces for clubs and organizations and it has a kitchenette area. And finally, this is our student affairs office and located in our Jones Center. So again, um, I work with all of our student organizations and clubs as well as um, students that live in the residential um, halls. So mainly most of our events on campus consist of comedians, we have musicians, we have a lot of fun and engaging events for students to participate in outside of the classroom and the academic area. Um, we have a bunch of student organizations like our media student organization called Lightning Studio, which takes a bunch of our cool and exciting videos and pictures for our campus. We have a bunch of, we have a lot of um, career oriented student organizations such as our entrepreneurship club, our society for human resource management, um, and more so um, our accounting and finance club. So we have a lot of student organizations to offer for our students. Um, typically, if there isn't a student organization that you see on our website or on campus, we encourage all of our students to um, reach out to our office, particularly me, and I will work with you to um, build that student organization on campus just to be present. Hi, I'm Beth Kirker. I oversee the Career Services Office here at the college. We want to meet with you your first year so we can work together to launch your career. We offer a variety of services. 
career planning, we can discuss with you what types of positions are related to your major, resume and cover letter preparation. We work with you to secure an internship and help you with networking and interviewing skills. We have an online job posting board where you can upload your resume and search for full-time, part-time, and internship positions. We host several events throughout the academic year. There are two career fairs, one in the fall and one in the spring. Last week, we hosted our first virtual career fair, and thankfully, it was a success. We host monthly mock interviews. This is where students and alumni practice interviewing with HR reps from various employers to hone their interviewing skills and get direct feedback. Yesterday, the Delaware River and Bay Authority participated with us in this event. We host employer recruiting events and information sessions. We bring employers into the classroom, whether in person or virtual, so students can learn about opportunities in their field and know what skills are needed to be successful candidates. Many of our students find success with the employer events and they secure positions, whether it be an internship, full-time or part-time position. We currently have students in internship roles with banks, accounting firms, wealth managers, insurance agents, clinical practices. The thing is you want to get experience in your field of study before you graduate. This experience will give you an edge when applying for a full-time position. So be sure to connect with us so we can work together to ensure you are career ready when you graduate from Goldie Beacom College. And then after you graduate, you can't get rid of us. We're still here for you. We are a lifetime research resource for our alumni. So thank you. And please let Brittany know if you have any questions. You can see we do have, I'll throw this one last tidbit in, over 90% of our graduates find employment or continue their education within three months of graduating. And the beauty of the small school is we're always in touch with you. So we know where you are and what you're doing. So again, thank you. Uh, good evening, everybody. My name is Eric Johnson. I'm from the Financial Aid and Advisement Office here at the Goldie College. And tonight I'm gonna to have a quick opportunity to chat with you a little about the financial aid process because for many um, students and families, this can often seem like a daunting process but here at Goldie, we try to really make it um, easy to understand and, and guide you through the process. So I'll chat a little about that and I'll briefly chat about the advisement office and how that can also assist you while you're a student at Goldie Beacom. So the financial aid process at Goldie Beacom is actually fairly straightforward. You apply to the college. So I know Brittany chatted about that earlier, but you send, uh, send your application in, send your admission materials in, and then once you're accepted, we begin to notify students of their tentative aid uh, packages. And how we do that is we use your FAFSA information. So if you're currently a senior watching this video, um, you wanna submit a 2021-2022 FAFSA uh, for that next year. So next fall, that's when you're gonna be starting school. Uh, we'll use the data from that, from that FAFSA to determine your grant eligibility as well as what your loans are eligible for. And then we put that along with your institutional aids you may receive. So Brittany, you mentioned earlier about your merit scholarship opportunities and perhaps other endowed scholarship opportunities. We put that all together on one tentative aid letter. I'll show you how much it would cost to attend Gordy Beacom. We typically break it down one of three ways, whether you're a commuter student, uh, we'll show you what the commuter cost is, your net cost. So that's your bottom line cost, what you'll owe tuition wise and housing. We also show you what you will owe if you decide to live in Leech Hall or our newer residence hall, uh, Frana. So, yep. So to complete the FAFSA, you'll visit studentaid.gov. On uh, studentaid.gov, by the way, that's where you can get all your resources when you're a student in college for the federal aid perspective. How much loans you've taken out, um, entrance cancel, master promise. You know, so it's a really good website to keep in your web browser bookmarked. Anyway, if you're a new user, which most of you will be, uh, you're going to start here on this screen when you get to studentaid.gov and you'll begin to create your profile and then you'll complete a 2021-2022 FAFSA. And then your following years, you'll return as a returning user, obviously. All right, so next slide, please. <laughs> So I briefly want to touch on the different types of aid because I often get this question, whether it's at, you know, a, a visit at, at high schools or fairs or even when students come to visit campus and they're in the financial aid office. There's a few different ways you can get aid to help assist you with college. The first way is grants. So on your FAFSA, the federal government determines your grant eligibility. Most students um, 
here at Goldie Beacom are either eligible for grants and loans or just loans. Um, grants are commonly Pell Grants. Um, some students do receive additional supplemental grants. They're known as SEOG grants. And they're uh, not a lot, but they do help offset your cost of education. Grants you do not pay back. Um, grants are essentially in a way like a scholarship um, in that they're a grant from the federal government. You're not required to pay them back um, ever. So essentially they're free money to use a student they can use towards your tuition. There's also scholarships. So in addition to what Brittany described earlier with GBC institutional scholarships, there's also a variety of organizations in the local area throughout Delaware that uh, provide scholarship opportunities to students. So I highly encourage you to look at those organizations, see if you qualify and to apply because you never know um, when you could qualify for additional scholarships. Every year we have several students that come in with outside scholarships from organizations, whether it's from their high school PTA association or a local rotary club in the uh, community they live in. So search, um, Google search, wherever, take a look at what's out there. They can help lower your cost as well. Then obviously there's loans. Loans come in one of two ways. There's the FAFSA, so those are federal direct loans from the federal government. And then there's also private loans from private lenders, um, community banks, um, private lending organizations. So look out, see what's out there. And uh, if you have any questions about the differences, you, you know, just let the financial aid office know and we'll help you make the best educated decision you can make. And finally, there's work study jobs. So our campus always has jobs on campus. You know, we're looking for people to sit in the library. You know, um, in the past, we've had students sit in our um, fitness center, you know, just checking students in. So there's opportunities on campus as well to uh, pick up a little extra cash to put towards your tuition. Right. And then finally, I think this is my last slide tonight. Um, there's the My Student Aid app. Um, so this is the really cool way to do the FAFSA that I mentioned two slides ago on your mobile phone. And the app is really cool. Um, they launched it last year, but they made several updates to it um, over the last year or so. And this fall, there's a plethora of information on the app. You can do everything on your phone now on a touch of a fingertip. And, and it has a lot of helpful resources. For example, if you're unsure what uh, document, what um, data to put into the FAFSA, there's a lot of help, help topics available and pictures to show you what line on the tax form to put it into your FAFSA. That's not to say Gordy Beacom's financial aid office won't be here to assist you, um, but we, but this is also another cool resource you can use as well. Every student's assigned an advisor here at the college, and so once you start. Every student receives an advisor and you work with that advisor with your financial aid moving forward, registering classes, if you ever need a transcript, or if you have a question, you can always come see an advisor. So most of you will work one of, with one of our admission reps coming in and then you receive an advisor afterwards. So really we work with you throughout your whole process here as a student. Hi, I'm Laura Grunza. I am a sophomore here at Goldie Beacom. Uh, I'm a business administration major and I have a concentration in management. I've lived in Delaware my entire life. I'm extremely local. I literally live five minutes down the road, so I pass by it my entire life. I went to Cab Calloway School of the Arts, so if anyone's watching from Cab, hi. Uh, so what made me choose Goldie Beacom? A lot of different things. Uh, I was at Cab and being a junior, we were always told start looking for colleges, get your GPA up, stressful junior year. And so I would put out my applications to all these different colleges, but none of them felt right. They were either too expensive, I wasn't getting that personal touch. But then Goldie Beacom happened, the price just seemed almost too right. I was getting, you know, almost too many emails, you know, I was getting my name in the emails, it, you know, it almost, it almost seemed too right. And, you know, I got scholarships back and everything just seemed really, really like a good fit. And that was before I even stepped foot on campus for a tour. So, you know, I, before all this COVID stuff happened, you know, I came on for a tour and they're still available. I know that because I, I have a job on campus, but I'll get to that later. My brain's all over the place. Sorry about that. So, you know, you would go on tour and it's a beautiful campus, five minutes to walk from either side of the campus. So, I mean, if you want a car on campus, it's completely fine. But like Brittany talked about earlier, it's not entirely necessary, but you can have it if you want to. 
Um, it's scenic. I mean, there are trees and there are nice places to sit and eat. And there was just a cafe when I was there and before everything got shut down. But now there's just a beautiful dining hall and places to sit and a meal plan. So, I mean, it's a complete upgrade from when I was there. So I can't even imagine it now, places to sit. But if you don't want to have anything in the dining hall for a day, you can walk literally right across the street and there is an entire shopping center with an Acme, a smoothie place, ice cream. That's about it. All you need is ice cream really at this point. It's college, let's be real. And you can just walk back and be completely fine for just five minutes in between class and you can walk right back. The classes itself, like Brittany talked about earlier, their baseline classes for your freshman year, which was a really, really good start. It felt like zero stress. You didn't have to feel like you were making all of these big decisions because we have no idea what we're doing. You know, we're being thrust into the world. We don't know what we want to do yet. So it was nice having all of these decisions taking off of our plate, which is another reason why Goldie Beacom has just felt like a right fit. And having such a good class size with only 20 students in there to one teacher it was really, really nice and personal. You know, I still see teachers in the hallway, well, I used to, and I would say, hey, and they would know who I was and I would know who they were. So it was nice having that kind of personal touch. And uh, I work on campus now because my internship fell through that I was supposed to have on summer. And it was really nice. I, I emailed career services at a chance. I was like, oh, I doubt, I doubt they'll have a job or, you know, they might not even email back, you know, they're probably so busy, but I got an email back within a day saying, oh yeah, we'd love to work with you. We're really open. Yeah, let's figure something out, which was just a relief on my part because the world was crazy. It was insane. And yet once again, here they are just being there and being open-armed and just being there for you. So I, I work in the international admissions department and, you know, they have me at part-time 20 hours a week. And so like Eric was talking about, you know, having the work job, just fixing everything up, it has been a savior. So I, I'm not an athlete, so I can't really talk about, you know, being a student athlete, but I mean, I feel like everything has been like a perfect fit. I can't really say anything bad. So I don't know. I'm glad I found Goldie Beacom, even though it was five minutes from my house, you know, <laughs> I, it was great. I'm glad that I go here. So. Thank you everyone. And I just wanted to put this up. Um, this is, you know, the last thing I wanted to mention. Um, like I said, we are having students on campus, but we are also having information sessions. So we are hosting those one Saturday a month and they're kind of like a smaller open house. So we have um, two options. So it would be there at 10 a.m. or 12 p.m. You can register for these on our website. We are trying to take all of the safety precautions with COVID, you know, asking everybody to wear a mask, taking temperatures, doing all that fun stuff. Um, but you will have the option to meet with an admissions representative and then go on a campus tour. So if you are interested and um, available to come to one of those, please register on our website. Um, and then lastly, if um, you are interested in Goldie Beacom, um, what, if you take your camera out and put it up to the QR code, this will bring you right to our um, inquiry form and then um, on your phone and you can just go ahead and fill out that inquiry form and that will add you to Goldie Beacom's um, information. So we'll be able to send you um, things in the mail, emails, things like that, that um, Laura was talking about. Um, or um, you can also just go to the website and fill out the application. So either one, whichever one's better for you. Um, and then we are available for any questions. Thank you, everybody. Wow, that was a great presentation. And especially, Laura, that was really heartfelt. And um, that was really great. <laughs> That was really great. Um, I'm glad that you found um, such a great fit for your college experience. Um, I do not see any questions in the chat. And so um, I think we can conclude. So I wanna thank the team from Goldie Beacom, um, Brittany and Beth and Andrew, Tatiana, Eric, 
and Laura, I think I got everybody. Um, if there are any questions um, for the Higher Education Office or Department of Education, our contact information is on the screen now. But um, you should use, um, you can find a lot of information at the DelawareStudentSuccess.org. As I mentioned earlier, upcoming webinars, this recording of this webinar will be posted there in um, just a couple of days. So please check in there um, so you can get helpful information on planning for what you're going to do once you graduate from high school. So thank you, everybody. Um, thanks for your time. And um, we will see you soon. Stay safe, everyone. Thank you and good night.